Hello and welcome to Revealing God. Um, this is my very first podcast or vlog. Um, please forgive me because I am not a podcaster or vlogger, but God put it on my heart a while ago to talk about various things in dealing with God to help people better understand who he is. And so I reached out to a few of you on Facebook, um, through my website, um, or my uh, author page and my book page and my personal page and uh, asked if you guys had any questions about God that you were unsure of or that you know other people may have. And um, so I want to thank you guys for your responses to that. Um, it was pretty incredible to see the responses that I got. Um, so with that being said, we're just going to jump into the first one. And uh, the question is from uh, one of my best friends. And he asked the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Right. And so I want to dive into this question and kind of pick it apart a little bit and, and tell you a little bit about my personal experience. I would say that for the most part, I'm a pretty good person. I'm not perfect. Never have been, never will be. Um, but, uh, for the most part, I try and do the right things and, and I love God with all my heart. And as some of you very well know, I've had some bad things happen. Um, the biggest one that I'm going to talk about, and I, I talked about it in my book, Friendly Fire, the betrayal of one soldier by the government, um, is that uh, back in the late 90s, I was given the anthrax vaccination and basically it had a test lot. It was a test lot that had a, a test substance in it called squalene. It basically destroyed my body. I've almost died twice because of it, once in 2003 and another time in 2016. And I went from a very healthy and fit uh, guy in the, in the Army, I was in the reserves, uh, to somebody who I, I was broken. My body was broken. Um, I wasn't able to work anymore. Basically, in the things that I love to do, um, I couldn't really do them as well or as thorough as, as uh, I used to. And um, so basically it took me from here down to here. And, and it was, there was a part of, of that time where it was the lowest, absolute lowest part of my life. Um, I prayed that God would take me. Um, I've done that several times because um, I didn't want to live. Right. And I would never take my own life because I, I don't feel like that's the way to go. I feel like it's a cowardly way out of life. And I definitely don't believe that God would want me to do that. And that being said, I still wanted to go. Right. I didn't want to hang around. I didn't want to do that. And, and I found myself asking God and, and myself, why did this happen to me? Why? Is it something that I did? Is it something, you know, that my parents did? Um, and so, you know, it, I've, I've come through a long journey of reflecting on God and praying and uh, diving into his word and trying to figure out why exactly this would happen and really look at the question of why. God allows bad things to happen to good people. And uh, let's see what his word has to say. I'm going to share something with you guys here. And uh, so let's start here. We'll start with uh, John chapter 9. And this is where Jesus heals a man who is born blind. It says, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, 
Why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? Jesus said, it was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned to us or assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can walk. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> so the man went and washed and came back seeing. So in this instance, um, God, Jesus is saying that, uh, Jesus is saying that God allowed this man to be born blind so that Jesus's miracle could be seen throughout the world, right? So that they could tell the story of Jesus healing the blind man so that God can display his power and might and his healing ability through this man. So it wasn't because the man did anything, obviously, because he was born blind, right? But it wasn't because his parents did anything um, to make him become blind. God is not vengeful as far as that goes, right? So um, in that instance, it's it's just a matter of, you know, sometimes he allows you to go through things so he could show his power. Let's see what else we got here. So then Jeremiah 29, this is where this is where you have to have, you have to have faith in God, right? That he knows the whole picture. We see such a small, small portion of what's going on in the world. All we see is what's going on in our life at this moment, right? And God sees the whole picture. God is not limited by time. God sees the beginning and the end. He knows the plans of man. Um, he knows everything and he works everything for our good. And so Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. And so God is basically using these things and he's turning them out for your for your betterment, right? He's he's using them to better your situation. Right. Doesn't necessarily explain why God allows things to happen to us, right? Or to good people, bad things happening to good people. But what it does is it tells us that God sees these things happening, right? And he's going to take a bad situation and make it better, right? He's going to use that, that, negative thing in your life or the bad situation. And he's going to turn it to advance his kingdom, advance your life. He's going to use it for the betterment. Okay. So, um, in my instance, I went through a lot of struggles. I went through, um, just, I, I wouldn't call it hell because I'm sure hell is a lot worse than that. Um, but they're, they're, there was a lot of pain and um, a sense of betrayal definitely by the government because I was used as a guinea pig and I was never told about it. I was never, I never gave consent to it. Um, I almost died twice because of it. I have this um, lifelong debilitating issue um, conditions right from this. And uh, the only way I'm going to get healed is when God decides to take that and turn it to good, right? And, um, but from this, what he has done is he called me to write my book, which I talk about the situation with the shot. 
And I talk about all of my struggles through it. And I talk about fighting the VA and fighting Social Security and um, how God stood by me the whole time. I talk about my experiences with God that I had, um, very personal ones, and um, coming out on the other side, right? And by other side, I mean, I'm, I'm way better off than I was before, okay? And when I wrote that book, I didn't, I mean, I, I was hoping to help people. That's, that was my hope. And, um, I did. And so, you know, it, it would have been nice if I made money on the book. Um, it costs a lot of money to write a book. I didn't realize that, but God's going to take care of that part too. Um, but I know of several veterans, disabled veterans that are in the same situation that I was in. And, um, They've reached out to me and thanked me for um, writing the book and for helping them and whatnot. And I've become good friends with a few of them. Um, and so, you know, God, God works miracles every day. And maybe, maybe you don't see them as miracles, right? Maybe you don't see them as um, the, the great thing that God is doing, right? But because I had to go through the struggles that I had to go through, I was able to help others. Okay. I was able to give them hope. I was able to give them um, a sense that they're not alone, which was a huge issue for me. I didn't know that um, there were so many people out there that have gone through the same experience that I have. Um, and so, you know, he, he does, he turns, he turns the negative things in your life and he turns them to good. And it, it, a lot of times it's good for you. Most of the time it's good for other people as well. And a lot of times, like in my instance, it's furthering his kingdom, right? Because not only not, you know, it, it's like steel, right? It gets harder and stronger in the fire. Right. And sometimes you got to go through that fire to come out stronger. And I got to say, um, with everything that I have gone through in my life and God being there the entire time for me, um, I've never been stronger. I have never been stronger than I am right now. Now, that's not to say that I don't have days where um, I'm depressed. I don't have issues with PTSD from dying or sorry, almost dying. Um, you know, I still have those issues, but I am so much stronger now than I was before. And I'm way stronger than I was before I ever got ill, right? Before I ever took the vaccination, um, I'm, I'm way stronger than when I was in my youth. And so God, sometimes allows you to go through these things to refine you, to make you stronger. And so let's see what else the word says about uh, why bad things happen to good people. Let's see here. We have next on the list, Romans 5. So Romans 5, it says, we can rejoice too. When we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So that kind of goes to what I was saying um, about hardening the steel, right? Making it stronger. Um, it gives us more confidence. And I got to say, my relationship with God has gotten so much stronger, so much closer. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, the last time I almost died was in 2016. And it was a month before my wedding. And uh, I had waited 40 years before I found the person that I truly wanted to marry. And um, 
I spent 10 days in a VA hospital. It was a nightmare. Um, I was going in and out of uh, delusional spells because they had taken me off of a medication that you're supposed to wean off of. And um, they had completely just stripped it away from me. And so I was literally going crazy. Um, try, I tried to run through the uh, VA naked. Um, I pushed slash punched a nurse. My wife says I pushed her. The nurse says I punched her. I don't remember these situations. I go off of what other people are telling me. Um, but uh, it's, it's crazy. Anyways, so the first night in the hospital, I'm sitting there and uh, both, both times I was asked if uh, I wanted a priest or a pastor to read me my last rites. Okay. And you know, it's pretty serious when they're doing that, right? They don't know if you're coming back. And um, so that's, that's an example of how serious it was. My endocrinologist had said she had never seen somebody. It was an Addison's crisis is, is what I was going through. And Addison's basically it, it, it's where your adrenal glands, your adrenal cortex is like over 90% gone because your body's just attacked it. And um, so it, your adrenal glands help with regulation of your uh, electrolytes like sodium, potassium, that kind of stuff. And so my, when, when you're in an adrenal crisis, your um, sodium becomes extremely low and that's, it's pretty much what can cause you to die. And my endocrinologist said she has never seen somebody with such low sodium ever come back. And so that's, that's how dire the situation was just to give you a picture. And I remember that first night in, um, um, the ICU and I was laying there and many times when I'm about to go to sleep, I have visions. It's not all the time. Um, they're kind of like dreams, but I'm not sleeping yet. So I'm not quite sure what to call them. Um, a lot of times they come true. A lot of times I feel like it's God guiding me. Um, sometimes it's just crazy stuff because my mind takes over, right? But uh, this this time I was laying there in my bed and uh, Lori, my wife, was next to me in the chair. And uh, I got my eyes closed. And I see this big brown eye like this, right? And it's just covering my whole vision. And I'm like, this is really weird. And as I'm watching, it kind of goes further and further away. And I'm getting a bigger picture of, of, or a better picture of what it is, right? And I see this man's face and it comes out and it zooms out more. And it's Jesus. And he's standing there with his arms open like this. And the overwhelming feeling that I got in that moment was, I got you. I got you. That's what I felt. And so I had no fear um, that I was going to die. I had no fear like that. And and the next day, um, it was actually confirmed because I talked to my mom and my dad. And both of them, verbatim, um, said that uh, Jesus has got you. And... Um, it was just confirmation of what I was seeing. And so when, when you're going through the worst times in your life, that's when I feel you draw the closest to God, right? Because many times when things are going so good in your life, you don't focus on God as much as you really should. Um, you know, you're focused on how great things are. Oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, my daughter's graduating from college this year, which is true. My congratulations, Hannah. Um, and, uh, you know, so and, and things are going really good for me right now. We moved to Kansas, um, which was a dream to get out of Washington state. Um, it was just too crowded and, and the politics and I'm not going to get into all that, but, um, I just couldn't handle it anymore. It was, it was weighing on my spirit way too much. It was almost like a spirit of darkness. And as soon as I got to Kansas, it was like a huge weight was lifted off. But many times when things are going great in your life, you don't really focus on God like you should. 
And, uh, you know, I'm guilty of it as well. Um, currently I talk to God several times a day. I go for a walk in the morning and I talk to him a good portion of that walk when I'm not yelling at the dog to stop peeing on everything because <laughs> he loves to pee on everything. I'm telling you, but, um, yeah. So anyways, um, in that dark time of my life, I drew so much closer to God and my, my faith in him was even more solidified than it was. Right. And so it, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, it, it may not, it may not cause what's going on. Right. Because God gives us all free will as well. So, it, I mean, this is why the God, this is why God is so hard for humans to understand because God sees everything. He knows what's going to happen. He knows everything that's going to happen, but he wants us to love him. So he gave us free will because if he said, you have to love me, then that's not really love. Right. And so God gave us the ability to do what we want, when we want, love who we want. Um, and, uh, so we have the free will to do that. Well, unfortunately, because man ultimately is evil, we have a lot of evil tendencies. Um, we're definitely not perfect. That's for sure. But a lot of times our free will, not ours, but you know, some people's free will is to do bad things to other people. Right. And so it's kind of why it's, it's hard to grasp. So, you know, God never promises you that you're never going to go through trials. He never promises you that life is going to be easy. 100% of the time. He never promises you the bad things aren't going to happen. He already knows that these things are going to happen, right? But what he promises you is that when these things happen because of another human or because of circumstances or because of your poor decisions, because we also have free will and we can create our own bad situations, right? Um, I know I've created a few of my own and, you know, allowing the army to give me that anthrax vaccine was one of them. My dad tried to warn me. He said, don't take it. And honestly, I thought my dad was crazy and they were threatening to court martial people and throw them in prison. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to do that because I was young. I was, I was in my early twenties, I think. And, um, I had my whole life ahead of me. The last thing I needed on my record was a court martial and a dishonorable just discharge from the military, right? And so I ended up doing it. Well, the consequences of my free will there was that I ended up with this lifelong condition, right? And by lifelong, I mean, until God heals me, because I, I promise you this, I am standing on the fact that he is going to heal me. And it may be, it may be in heaven. It may be, I don't know. But one day I will be healed of all of this. And, and I promise you that because you know why I can promise that is because God promises that and God never changes his mind. He doesn't, he doesn't back up, uh, back out of his, his word. His word is true. And, um, anyway, sorry, I got off, got off track, but so this may be. Maybe this is why I haven't done podcasts before because I have a tendency to ramble. <laughs> I think I got one or two more scriptures for you. Let's see what, what we got. So Isaiah 57, and this one hits me hard because um, this year I had a good friend. I've known him since high school. Um, he passed away. He had a very aggressive form of cancer, one of those turbo cancers. Um, and he was a dear friend of mine. We've been roommates before. Um, we may not have talked all the time, but he was my brother. You know, he's, he was, uh, one of those good guys. If you ever needed picked up, you know, um, if you ever needed to be happy or, or change your mood, he, he was one of those guys you could always go to. Right. And, um, this year we lost him to, to turbo cancer. And, um, you know, it was, it was really hard 
And, you know, a lot of people will find themselves asking, why? Why did God allow this to happen? Why did God do this? Why did God do that? Right. And uh, there's a reason. And in my mind, I feel like God has a purpose for each and every one of us. Right. He knows the number of hairs on our head. And uh, for some of us guys, every once in a while, those hairs <laughs> become less and less and less as you get older. But uh, luckily it's not, not me as much, but, uh, um, the, the point is I, I feel like God, he, he has a purpose and a job for each and every one of us. Right. And I feel like when your job is completed, when you've done what you were sent here to do, God will take you home. And I feel like Ben, again, my, my really good friend, um, I feel like his work was done here on earth and that's the only thing that, that can explain it in my mind. Um, people could talk about, you know, why it happened and, and whose fault it is and this and that, and, you know, people can speculate on, you know, vaccines and, and whatever, all of that doesn't matter because if I guarantee if Ben's job here on earth wasn't done he would still be here. And now he's up in heaven with God because his job was complete. He did a good job here on earth and he's done. He gets to, he gets there early. And, and I'm a little envious of that because, um, he right now is spending time with Jesus and, um, we're stuck here on earth where let's face it. Things are an absolute mess. Um, but anyways, let's see what Isaiah has to say. Isaiah 57, uh, starting in verse one, good people pass away. The godly often die before their time, but no one seems to care or wonder why no one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. And so let's take Ben's case, for example, right? Ben's job on earth was done. I feel like God was protecting him so he didn't have to go through what's coming um, ahead. And and let's face it, guys, things are going to get a lot worse in this world before they start getting better. Um, I I feel like we are pretty, pretty much in the end times right now. Um, I've seen and maybe I'll do a show on this um, another time, but I've seen prophecy after prophecy come true. And, um, there's signs in, in heaven that point to this as the end time. And so the promise in the Bible is that things will get better, right? But we are going to have to go through some really, really dark times. And I feel like God was protecting Ben from having to go through these really dark times. Um, so am I a little jealous? I'm a little jealous. Yes. Um, I feel lucky to be living in these times because I really, I pray that I will be alive to get to see the coming of the Lord. Um, however, who knows? Nobody knows the timing of that, but you know, we're told to look for the signs, um, of the end times, right? God says, nobody will know the time, but to look for the signs and, and I'm seeing the signs guys. So if you're not right with God, now would be a good time. Just all you, it's so easy. It's so easy, guys. You ask him into your heart and you claim that, uh, you know, Jesus is the son of God and, and that, that you love him and then start following him, start reading the word, start, start, you know, just living the principles is all, but all you have to do for your salvation is accept Jesus Christ in your heart. That is it. That is all because we are not saved by works. Right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many disabled veterans my book helps. Right. It doesn't matter. As far as my salvation goes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know what, what good I do. I'm saved. I know that my spot is reserved in heaven. Um, now, obviously on the human level, on, on our mankind level, it matters because I'm helping people and making their lives better. Um, and I encourage each and every one of you, um, to just help your fellow, fellow man out there. Um, 
just be nice. I, I, one of the things I absolutely love here out in Kansas, in, and it reminds me of Gig Harbor where I was raised um, in the early days, anyways, um, everybody waves. Just about everybody waves. You're driving by, everybody's like, hey, hey. And um, so uh, it's it's one of the things that I just love about out here um, in rural Kansas is that, you know, people are just so much nicer. And, and back home, you know, uh, Gig Harbor and, and Tacoma and Seattle, they've grown up. Everybody's busy with their lives. Nobody pays attention to the other people. Um, everybody's mad at everyone. And, and, you know, I felt that all the time, just pressing on me all the time. And so, um, you know, just, just live right, live, live, live a good life. And, and it's, it's not really going to have an effect as far as my understanding on your salvation, but what it does is it shines the light of Jesus out from you to other people so that they may use you as an example of what a Christian should be. What is Christ? What is it to be Christ like? Right. And I'm not perfect. Trust me. I am not perfect. Um, especially coming from a uh, dad who was in the military and uh, military background myself. Um, I may say a few words here and there that are not uh, very appropriate, but guess what? You know, I, I truly do love my fellow man. I get aggravated. I get frustrated a lot of times. I don't understand most of the world. Um, when I see something and it's so obvious to me, I, I, I get so frustrated that people don't see it. Even my closest friends, um, I try and shed light on things and, and they just don't see it. And it, that, that frustrates me because, um, I just don't see how they could see it, but I'm sure they think I'm crazy. So who knows? But, um, you know, the point is once you accept Jesus into your heart, you can become that light into the darkness, right? This world is dark. This, this earth is dark. It's not just the U S if you look around the world, all of this stuff that we're going through is happening everywhere. Um, it's a bad place to live. It really is right now. And so as followers of Christ, we need to be that light into the darkness. We need to be, you know, loving to our neighbors. We need to be nice to other people. We don't know. We need to go out of our way to help other people. Guys, it's important. It's, it is so important. The only thing that could change this world is us on an individual level. And if enough of us on an individual level start showing love, then the world can change. It may take some time, but think about it. How much time does, does it take for a video to go viral, right? Probably not this one because I'm talking about God, but, um, you know, you got some stupid cat video, right? And all of a sudden, bam, they got 10 million views and follows and this and that. It doesn't take long because it's contagious. And, um, you know, love, love will just exponentially grow. And so if you affect, let's say you, you show nothing but love in one day and let's say you affect 10 people positively those 10 people, maybe it made a difference in their day, right? And let's say six of them go out and they show the love to another 10 people. Think of how exponential that could be. And we could change this world quickly. Um, anyways, I'm rambling on again, but some of these things I feel like it's important to say. Anyways, John 16, verse 33 I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So once again, here Jesus is telling us, look, there's going to be trials and sorrows. Life is going to be tough. Bad things are going to happen to you. But I, meaning Jesus, I've overcome it. I've overcome all of it. You can overcome it through me. 
That's his point. And John 10. Uh, this is another reason why bad things happen, right? And and it's it's kind of a, I'll, I'll get to it. But John 10, uh, verse 10, the thief's purpose is to steal, steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And that was Jesus again. Um, so the devil, right? I, I've, I've heard it said before and I don't, no, I don't remember who said it, but, um, I know there's an Eric church song that says it, but, um, it's like the, the devil's greatest victory was making people think that he doesn't exist. And I know those aren't the exact words, but, um, when people don't think that the devil exists, then that's an absolute victory for him because then he could do all of his evil things behind their back and sneaky and, and all that. Um, if you want to, if you want to read a good book, um, in the Bible, uh, read Job. If you want to find out how the devil can go in and just manipulate and, and do bad things to people. Um, Job is a very, very, um, special story to me because the first time I was in the hospital was the first time that I wrote, I read the book of Job and it's all about how the devil comes to God and, you know, God's like, you know, look at this earth and, and, uh, the devil's like, well, there's not one person that is, um, righteous and God's like, look at my son, Job and long story short, the devil convinces God to allow him to take away various things throughout the book um, from Job, because the devil's point is, of course, he is faithful. Of course, of course, he's, he's, um, he believes in you and is faithful to you, God, because he has all these things, right? He's, he's wealthy, he's married, he's, he's got a beautiful wife, beautiful kids, and, and, you know, all this stuff going for him. Let me take this. And I bet he's not going to be faithful. Let me take this. And I bet he's not going to. So God was allowing Satan to, to test Job, right? And in the end, you know, Job was faithful and God restored him completely. Um, matter of fact, he restored him beyond what he had before. Um, so Satan is real and he, he is a destroyer. He, that's his job. His job is to destroy, to deceit, uh, deceive people, um, to, to rob, steal, to create chaos. He's doing a heck of a job right now in this world. And, um, you know, we, we need to band together in prayer and stand up against him. So hopefully this has helped a little bit understand why bad things happen to good people, why God would allow it. Um, you know, just a quick recap, um, and I'm probably going to forget some, but you know, God will use it for good, right. To further your purpose and the purpose of his kingdom. Um, sometimes God is trying to strengthen you through these trials. He's trying to make you stronger, bring you closer to him. Um, sometimes it's the devil, right? Sometimes it's the devil saying, I'm going to give it I'm going to put him in a wreck or, or whatever. Sometimes it's your own decisions in life that create these situations. And then you got to go through them. Um, so, but the promise that God has is that he's always, always going to use that to better his kingdom and to better you. Okay. Well, I hope that this helped today. Um, I would like to end with a prayer and I think, I think that it's appropriate, um, for me to end every show with a prayer for this country. Um, and they're probably going to sound a lot alike every time and that's fine. I don't care. Right. But our country needs saving. Our country is in bad, bad shape. Um, we have fallen so far away from God and we wonder why there's shootings. We wonder why there's this and that all over the place. Well, guess what? It's because we kicked God out of the schools. We kicked God out of, out of, uh, courtrooms. We kicked God out of, uh, Congress. And, and, you know, if, if, if you kick God out, you can't expect things to go great, right? Because God's the one that's in control of everything. 
So why would you do that? So anyways, enough rambling. Um, let's get to it. Lord, we just uh, come to you together and you say where two or more are gathered in your name, God, um, it shall be done. And Lord, so we come together right now and we pray for our country, the United States of America. And if any of you come from another country, we pray for your country as well. If this prayer is for the United States of America, God, we pray that, that you draw closer to us, God, that we draw closer to you. Lord, we pray for your protection. We plead the blood of Jesus over our country, God. We pray that common sense becomes common in America again, because it is long gone. And Lord, we just pray that, that you can become the center of our country again in Jesus name. Thank you guys so much. Hopefully that answered your questions. Um, please leave a comment. Share the heck out of this video. If you're interested in my book, you can find it at my website, um, travisperrier.com. And uh, love you guys. God bless.